Aquashella Daytona Beach recently finished and I was invited to the show to record and document the show as a saltwater hobby reporter. Since this was done in Florida and on my daughter's birthday, I decided to take the whole family with me to experience the Aquashella Festival together. Join me and Emma as we go through the whole show to highlight all the eye candy corals products and going one step further to highlight all the best of the show outside of our saltwater hobby. The venue was literally right on the beach and as soon as we opened the curtains from our hotel room, we were greeted by a beautiful beach scenery and many people that attended to the show had great time enjoying the beach when it was possible. Naturally, my family also really enjoyed this as well and I was getting bonus points. This trip was starting out very well. Going back to the show, Aquashella is known for their artistic approach, making their show a festive celebration, and it really starts from the get-go with their entrance. I remember being absolutely amazed walking through it for the first time. So, without further ado, let's start our journey. right out of the entrance, salt water sections were present. So let's go check out some of the eye candy corals that I have seen at the show. I'm 
I observe these things very carefully because every few years trends of corals, like fashion, changes. Yet still, there is no slowing down in the interest of Ghanis. While it did slow the momentum, torches are still very popular, especially the gold variants. I honestly couldn't keep up with so many different names. As a stickhead, I was also happy to see great variety of extremely colorful aquaporas. Much respect to the vendors on growing and pulling some amazing colors on these beautiful specimens. It was also good to see the vendors share their tips with the hobbyists so that they can also put a similar colors in their own systems. Learning, bonding, forging friendships, I think it's one of the main benefits of people coming to these shows. Speaking of learning, what I really enjoyed from this show was meeting a collector from Western Australia. While he showed off tons of their immensely impressive corals, what captivated me was our conversation of where the corals are from, their natural environment, where they're found, and how to mimic their surroundings properly to create a thriving environment, and why some of those Australian corals don't thrive as much as they should in our home aquariums in the long term. This was a very pleasant exchange of pace and information that I didn't expect from this show, and I was extremely grateful to Caleb from Vibrant Corals for having me there to speak to this gentleman. Now, let's go check out some of the booths that caught my attention. Benepets caught my attention as they had a great setup at this show. They showcased their newly released pelletized fish and coral food that's embedded with proprietary blends of bacteria that has proven results previously shown with their powderized food that takes care of excess nutrients in the system. What caught my attention about their booth was that they did six feeding sessions in two days and that small frack tank didn't get any water changes nor did it have any filtration in place minus the filter floss to catch the larger food particles. To me, that was incredible display of faith of their products and I really respected how they were standing behind their products. I'm sure many hobbyists and vendors appreciated these displays as well, as well as the free samples and goodies. Seachem was the hottest booth of the whole show. The booth was filled with people that were eager to take part of this event. My son was one of those, and he was adamant on spinning the wheel, and he won a pump for me, with, and was so proud that he won something so nice for me. And it's nice backup pump for sure. I personally was really wanting their coffee mugs for my collection of reef mugs, and I was able to add to them thanks to my friends Shane and Jay for getting them for me. Teach's booth was also extremely popular as they partner up to give away a free tank at the show as they showcase their newly released touchless heater that utilizes NFC technology. Often being the weakest link in a list of equipment, I was happy to see a big company like CJ to step up to show us how they can innovate and make this vulnerability into a dependable asset that is backed with their industry-leading five-year warranty. I also want to take a minute to acknowledge a creative effort to make one-of-a-kind standout displays. Well done, CJ Team. Well done. XP Aqua unveiled all-in-one ATO slash water change machine that has multiple optical sensors and three different pumps to do their daily water changes on the intervals that you choose. Priced competitively at $199, I was really intrigued by this and I will later do a review on this unit to see how well this unit works. And if you were to ask me, this product stood out to me the most on this show. Bite Aquariums, leader in captive breeding as well as aquaculture, made a surprise booth at this Aquashella show. Usually they don't do many booths, so I was really surprised to see all their offerings in one place and it was really well received as well. And at this show, they showed off Yurple, which is a hybrid between a yellow tang and a purple tang, which costs close to $10,000. Julian Sprung's Two Little Fishes made the first time appearance to the show as well, knowing Julian personally, who really loves and enjoys freshwater fish and planted aquariums. I thought it was odd that he wasn't there from the get-go. I was really happy to see him fully integrated and his mangrove displays being well received and him being recognized for being an icon that he is. They really did an excellent job putting together a booth that, that truly showcased all of their products all in one place. I also really enjoyed all the talks which educated many hobbyists. Mark Levinson, as always, was funny, educational, while teaching the practical way of reaping, while someone like Harry O'Neill literally blew a lot of people's mind explaining the bleeding edge technology 
and the work of Coral Spawning. Another aspect of the show that I really enjoyed was integrating competitiveness to this show. Fragging competition which showcased the skills and the tips of the pro propagators gave insights and techniques to many people who goes who does minor fragments at home and it was great to see that they gave away so many frags at the end. Everybody wins, right? Trim competition showcased the knowledge of genetics to bring out the different unique colors of different shrimps. Aquascaping competitions both for children as well as the professional ones which brought the country's best aquascapers and had them to and had them skate for the show to compete for the best of the show award. Talking with them, you really learn about what's going on in their head while they plan, put things together, and, and how they prepare for it. Creating a beautiful ecosystem that is pleasing to the eye is a common trait on both freshwater and saltwater hobby. And it was good to get so many different perspectives to incorporate into my bank of ideas. Also, check out these amazing animals that were present at the show. Absolutely amazing. We learned so many things about scorpions, like how you could put it to sleep when it's stressed out, tarantulas, snakes, geckos, monitors, and other big lizards. Absolutely joy for me as well as children who got to interact with them firsthand. I asked Emma what was her favorite thing about the show and she replied it was axolotls, fossils, and art. Speaking of art, she had the chance to meet Nori Boston, who she adores, and she had so many questions to ask her prior to the show, but when she met her in person, she got so shy that she couldn't even say hello when I made the introduction. Maybe next year. She also got her face painted both days, one more elaborate than the last, and thoroughly enjoying the show. We went around and saw a whole bunch of art from many talented artists and coral and fish pillows. This gentleman also had one heck of a fossil collection for sale and it really intrigued my children like crazy. I almost wanted to put them together with Boomer one of the smartest humans that I know to learn about prehistoric animals that are in fossil but I didn't want to bombard him with kids just yet, maybe next year. In the end, Emma has gotten so many earrings and dolls for her birthday. Unfortunately, I didn't pick up the axolotl which was one of her favorite because I found out the requirements to keep them thriving and that they are 15 year commitment which I couldn't commit. While speaking to the breeder that was there, I found that one female laid hundreds of eggs on the setup day of Aquashella and she brought everything so that we can observe the larval stage of axolotl. Look at the little ones inside the egg through the viewing aid of microscope. Absolutely an amazing experience for me and my little ones. Show was amazing. This show truly is a festival and offers a very different and unique experience for you to see feel and to learn. Team did an outstanding job putting everything together to make this one of a kind experience. And talking with Sean, he feels that they'll have a show at Daytona from now on instead of Orlando after being present for the show. I'm not complaining about it and looking forward to it. Oh, and many of us got to experience Bucky's for the first time and spent tons of exuberant amount of money on brisket sandwiches and beef jerkies. Add a bonus to the trip. Alright guys, so that was our venture of Aquashella Daytona. What was your favorite from this video? Leave it in the comment section down below. And oh, please do stop me when you see me at the show. I love meeting with you guys, talking with you guys, and just interacting overall. Oh, and another thing, please wish Emma happy birthday on the comment section below. Thank you so much guys, and have a happy reaping.